weekend I went to our local art gallery here in Caen where they had a very interesting exhibition about women artists and women in portraits and I took notes as I went around the, the visit, it was a guided visit and I thought I'll share this on my channel because I figured it might be of interest to you as well. So here's what I learned. First of all we looked at a portrait of what appeared to be an old lady and it, it was actually called Portrait d'une vieille dame. Uh, the guy told us that actually she wasn't old in today's terms, she was 48. Uh, they knew this because it was written, the artist had written her age on the back of the canvas. The guide explained that when the painting was made, which was back in the 16th century, the life expectancy at that time was only 50 years old. So in actual fact, this lady was considered a grandma, or she was probably a grandma, and she was an old lady for her day. She looked like an old lady to you. It was pointed out to us that um, many portraits of women are simply called portrait of unknown woman. And uh, many, whereas many portraits of men are, you've got their name, you've got lots of details about their life. Um, and often in, in history, uh, the women in portraits are unknown and forgotten, which I thought was really sad. We know very little about the life of this lady, but there are clues in the details in the painting. I think it's really interesting how if you know how to look for them, you can find all sorts of interesting clues and indications about the person who was painted in a portrait. So this is what we were told about this particular portrait. Usually in portraits from this period, we see the profile of the sitter or the semi-profile. It was unusual for female sitters to face the painter head on. Also, she took up the whole of the canvas, a sign of self-confidence and a certain level of authority. We also noted that she showed signs of wealth, such as a fur-lined cape and a beautifully designed dress. She would have been rich to be able to afford a portrait, but she didn't flaunt her riches excessively, as discretion was very much a valued quality at the time. Art historians see the dog in this painting as a symbol indicating that the lady existed mainly within the home and that she didn't have any kind of a career. Then we looked at some women who were all by Cornelius Jansons and we noted that the light often comes from the left in portraits and I thought that was very interesting. I didn't know that. I asked the guide why and she said, uh, it's simply because most, most painters uh, are right-handed and therefore it was easier for them to sit their subject uh, to the left of them with the light coming from the left um, so they could work with their right hand more easily. So I thought that was quite an interesting little fact. I think many artists that I know today are actually left-handed, including myself. But back in history, it was strongly discouraged, if not entirely banned, to be left-handed. Uh, they associated it with the devil, so perhaps even artists learn to paint with their right hand. Then we looked at this really interesting auto-portrait of Elizabeth Sophie Sharon. She was one of the very few women who was accepted by the Royal Academy of Painters and Sculptors. This was the painting that she submitted in order to be accepted by that academy. The interesting detail that we learned was that she chose to paint herself holding a sketch. Um, it's a drawing and it was believed back in those days that women couldn't draw. So she, she had the self-confidence and the self-assurance to say, hey look, uh, here's a painting of me with a drawing that I've done and yes I can draw. Um, the problem was that women weren't allowed to attend drawing classes because um, a lot of the time drawing classes uh, involved drawing a nude and they weren't permitted to see nudes. So women had to kind of guess where muscles were on the body and how, you know, how nudes would actually look. Um, so she really kind of changed the way that people looked at female artists and showed that yes, actually, uh, they can draw and they can do everything that a man can do just as well, of course. By painting herself holding a drawing, she was sending a clear and very courageous message that of course she knew how to draw and that she was indeed an accomplished artist. 
she was the last of only four female Academy members to die and when she did, the Academy announced that they would no longer accept any women into the Academy as she was so exceptional, such a genius, that no woman would ever be able to compare. Happily, only 15 years after this idea was imposed, the Italian artist Rosalba Carriera introduced the fashion of pastel paintings and everyone agreed that she should be accepted into the Academy and many other female painters followed shortly after. The final piece we were shown was a portrait painted by Elizabeth Vigée Lebrun. She was the official portrait painter of Marie Antoinette. And one of the main reasons that we remember her today as an artist is that she had the idea of writing her own memoirs. She wrote over 400 pages of memoirs. So we know a lot about her life and we know a lot of details about what she did. And it's for that reason that we remember her today and that she wasn't forgotten in history. The guide explained to us quite simply that the more artists were written about over time, the more they've been remembered. Um, so it was a very good idea of uh, Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun to actually write down her own memoirs. That way she wrote about herself and was not forgotten. She had a great deal of commissions and many of the young ladies who wanted their portrait painted by her wanted to look like the sort of star of the day who was Marie Antoinette. So you can see in this portrait that there is quite a similarity uh, with this image of Marie Antoinette. There's also some interesting indicators in the portrait um, that show the type of woman that she wanted to be shown as. So she's wearing white, which is the colour of innocence, and she's holding a crown of pink roses, which is the colour of romantic love. Behind her, we can see a cupid, but the cupid's arrow is no longer there, which indicates that either she, is, either she has fallen in love or is about to. Um, you can also note that she's got quite rosy cheeks, which might be an indication of um, amorous feelings. There was a really interesting tour around our local art gallery, and it made me very aware that over history, it was very difficult for a woman to become a professional artist. And it made me feel very lucky that today, as long as you work hard enough, I think um, it's possible for both men and women equally to become um, successful artists. I hope you enjoyed this little talk for International Women's Day. Um, I thought it was important to mark the occasion as I'm a female artist and I paint a lot of, of women. I'll see you again on Friday for my weekly art vlog. Bye for now.